Today we're going to be looking at the impact of a son being raised by a narcissistic mother. I imagine there'll be two people, two types of people, broadly speaking, looking for a video with a title like this. One will be the sons of narcissistic mothers, wondering what kind of impact and effect they can expect in their lives. And the other will be the partners of sons who suspect that the mother is narcissistic. And the question on everybody's lips will probably be, am I fucked? or is he fucked? So the quick answer that I can give you that will offer you a little bit of psychological relief before we go any further is the answer is no. You're not completely doomed uh, to a life of singlehood. Your relationship isn't doomed just because your partner may or may not be the son of a highly narcissistic mother. What are the kinds of things that you can expect if you expect that you are the son of a narcissistic mother? or you're the partner of the son of a suspected narcissistic mother. One of the things that you can expect is that the son, having grown up with a highly selfish, very, very rigidly self-focused mother who can't really afford to show that son much love, is that there are going to be intimacy issues. The way that we love ourselves is directly modeled from the way that our parents loved us. So if the mother in her narcissism was very neglectful, the son may very well end up finding himself becoming neglectful of his own needs. If the mother was very demanding of the son, demanding that he put aside all his own needs for her own, he will find that he has a tendency to put aside his own needs for the needs of other people, not necessarily his partner in a relationship, but somewhere in his life, you'll see a definite tendency towards putting his needs to one side in order to take into that place, the needs of other people. Could be from work, could be from family, could be from his children, could be from his partner as well. Naturally, the son of a highly narcissistic mother who was raised in an environment where he wasn't really shown any kind of authentic love from his mother is going to be distrustful of intimacy. He's gonna find intimacy difficult and challenging. If you are the son of a narcissistic mother and you're having problems in your relationship and that's what brought you to this video, or if you suspect that your partner is the son of a narcissistic mother, I suggest you find a good relationship therapist or counselor in your area and that you get together and go together and talk these issues through with a qualified therapist or counselor who specializes in this particular issue. A child, any child uh, of any gender raised in an environment with a highly narcissistic mother is going to find it hard for them to assert themselves. They're going to find it very hard to learn to say no, and they're going to find it very difficult to assert their own boundaries. Now, asserting yourself, saying no, and asserting your own boundaries don't sound particularly romantic and don't sound like they're essential components for a healthy long-term relationship, but I assure you they are. You must learn to say no to the people closest to you, your most intimate relationships. Everybody has to learn to maintain and at times reassert their boundaries with the, the people that they're closest to, especially if you're living with that person and you need to know what your values are. So if you are the son of a narcissistic mother, you suspect you are, or you're the partner of the son of a narcissistic mother, these are the kinds of things that need to be done. Otherwise, if you're the partner of somebody like this, you will start to experience your partner, the son of a narcissistic mother, as being a little bit codependent and something of a pushover. This can have really terrible effects uh, in a long-term relationship on your attraction to your partner, your respect for your partner, and your desire to create more intimacy with them and your ability to feel safe within that relationship. If you know that your partner is very easily manipulatable and very easy to be uh, bullied, it's not going to be easy for you to then offer them that level of trust, that level of vulnerability, that level of uh, love in order to generate the intimacy that you're looking for, the, the authentic intimacy, non-performative, authentic intimacy that makes long-term relationships palatable, uh, enjoyable, fulfilling, and possible. It's gonna be very difficult to do that if your partner uh, can't say no. To the sons of narcissistic mothers, you must learn to say no. 
If you're in a relationship and you've noticed the pattern of ending up in abusive relationships, particularly with women in your life, you should consider the possibility that you've internalized a negative or bullying unconscious image of women in general, and that you can now only find uh, quote unquote fulfillment. Of course, it isn't real fulfillment um, in being in relationships with women who are effectively abusive, just like your mother was who don't respect your boundaries, who don't permit you to say no, who don't permit you to have your own values, who don't permit you to be your own person. When we're growing, as we're growing up in the world, we're forming our ways of operating in the world. Our parents are really our first interactions uh, with adults that we ever have. And so that imprinting goes very, very deep into us. If your imprinting says, put aside your needs for mine, never say no to me, you're not allowed any of your own boundaries, you will carry that forward into adulthood. You could find yourself in lots of abusive relationships with women, or possibly when you are with a woman in a good relationship, you'll find yourself overgiving. You'll find yourself never saying no, and you'll find yourself potentially in a situation where you resent your partner because you've agreed to things that you don't actually really want to agree to. You should seriously consider uh, the concept of codependency and overcoming it. I've written a book about that. So that's a man's perspective on being a codependent, having been raised in a highly narcissistic environment. Um, it's a book that uh, is told in, a, it's, uh, in an anecdotal style. It's not a psychology book as such. It's not full of jargon. It's just full of uh, the stories from my life and how I overcame codependency. That book is called A Cult of One. If you're interested in learning how to do this as a man, from a man's point of view, you might wanna get a hold of that book. What else can you expect? Well, you can expect that over time, it's going to get harder and harder during a relationship as you move through that timeline together and the intimacy increases for you to get closer to each other without fusing and merging. If you're the partner, of a son, whether it's a heterosexual or a gay relationship, I can't see why it would make any difference. But if you're the partner of a son of a narcissistic mother, you will find frustratingly that it's very hard for your uh, um, partner, the son, to distinguish between love, intimacy, connection, and fusing and merging. So that poor guy raised in that environment as a child as he was, thinks that true love is obedience. He thinks that true intimacy is subservience. He thinks that to demonstrate intimacy and how much he loves you, he should sacrifice himself upon the altar of your desires. And what you'll find is the sensation, the unpleasant sensation that you're dating, or sorry, not you're dating, you're, you're, you're in a relationship with a kind of a chameleon who's gonna do, say, and be whatever they think is the best match for you. Now, in certain elements of the relationship, that may seem appealing to you. I assure you that the costs will outweigh any meager benefits in the long run. And you really, both of you, have to be uh, looking very seriously at getting into um, a, to see a relationship counselor, a relationship therapist, and the son of the narcissistic mother. I'm very hopeful that you know, I think the prognosis is good uh, that you can resolve these issues, but you really must work with a therapist to overcome this highly pronounced tendency and desire to create peace at home, because it's a reflection of what you knew in childhood, through fawning, through supplicating, through submitting, through being subservient, when that's really not what your partner wants or needs. Well, sometimes your partner may want that and they may enjoy elements of that, but it is not what they need in the long term. They may lose attraction for you. They may um, simply get bored. They may end up feeling smothered because you don't realize it, but your mother's mode of teaching you love was to fuse. So the technical terminology that we need to touch on before we start wrapping the video up would be enmeshment. All narcissistic parents enmesh with their children of either gender. The enmeshment between a mother and a son, according to some of the research I looked at, can be worse than it would be for a daughter. So you have enmeshment, which means you are literally enmeshed. You've become one, they have fused and merged with you. Why would it be worse with a son than with a daughter? 
because of another rather unpleasant uh, uh, concept and side effect. It's called emotional incest. So the mother of the narcissistic mother to a son will start to treat him as though he were a partner. And she's more likely to do that with a son than she would be to do with a daughter. Even as she treats you like a partner and invites you in to be more intimate in really inappropriate ways. And I don't, it's not necessarily uh, anything sexual. It could be, it could be sexual. There is a correlation between um, actual incest and child abuse and cluster B personality disorders, of course, because they're often comorbid with psychopathy, for example. But that's not what I'm talking about. We're saying emotional incest. So the emotion, so you think of what sexual incest is, it's an inappropriate uh, sexualized relationship between family members. The emotional incest is an inappropriate emotionalized relationship between the family members where you're not supposed to be directing that type of communication or that level of emotion or intimacy at your own children. It's inappropriate, boundary breaking, and really, really damages them. So the mother will have treated the little boy as though he were a second husband. The mother will have treated the little boy at times like a girlfriend that she can gossip to, perhaps even about his father. So the son of a narcissistic mother will end up with a very skewed vision of what love is, a very skewed vision of what relationships are, a skewed vision of women, but then a very skewed vision of men. So I will f finish with this. So we covered a few technical terms, enmeshment, emotional incest. These are things you need to understand. Codependency, that's an issue you should probably have a little look at as well. Boundaries, if you're not familiar with it, um, you should have a look at what healthy psychological boundaries are. But there's a concept from Jung, J-U-N-G, the Swiss psychoanalyst Jung, Carl Jung. He called it anima possession, anima possession. So what his suggestion was that in women there could be animus possession, where the woman would become possessed uh, in a sort of a very negatively aspected archetype of a man. She'd become very bullying and, and bossy and dictatorial. In anima possession, the idea was that there was a very highly negative archetype of a woman that would then possess the man. So instead of being bullying and dictatorial and, and emotionally violent, uh, in this manifestation, he would become very critical. He would complain a lot. He would be very passive and uh, overly submissive. So you'd end up with this really awful blend that cannot function for a long-term relationship. And if it, if it staggers along and people are stoically just remaining in it, you'll see the light go out behind their eyes. If you suspect there is anima possession there, if you suspect that you're really struggling to assert yourself, you're really struggling to assert your boundaries, you're very, very negative, you're complaining a lot, you're way too passive, you're not sitting in the driving seat of your life, then what you've lost is the noble aspect of the masculine and the noble aspect of the feminine have, have, have disappeared because of disavowal. But that's a subject for another day. We'll get into that a, a different day. In essence, without using any kind of technical language, this uh, boy, this man who is now a boy trapped inside of a man's body, probably won't know how to be a man and probably is frightened of being a man. Because as much as his mother showed him extra attention and special favors and more intimacy by effectively pro and probably parentifying him through the emotional incest enmeshment relationship, she will have also castigated and punished him for the negative aspects that she saw in his father. So her actual lover, the, the person that she actually physically had sex with to produce the child, she's now going to take those frustrations out with him, the adult actual father on this little manifestation of the father because he's a hard uh, he's a soft target and he becomes this easy uh, uh, straw man uh, strachilo uh, voodoo doll that she can beat up in the absence of the when the father's not around so uh, a lot of people in this field who talk about it they're very pessimistic as regards the outcome of these kinds of relationships if I, as i've just described it i'm sure you can hear how much damage would have been done there and how difficult it would make long-term, uh, healthy, sane, boundaried adult relationships to be. But if the work is done and you're patient, you're diligent, you're honest, and you're prepared to tell the truth about who you are and how you really feel and to fight for your own individuation, which means parenting yourself as an adult, then I believe that you can have a, a good relationship and you can learn to be a man and you can learn to be a man 
inside of a healthy, safe, boundaried adult relationship as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Thank you. Okay, folks, the new course, uh, Unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse, is out now. And if you're interested in finding out more about that, please click the link below.